Gents, I just want to pause the episode for a moment to let you know about the Strong Men of Value Academy. You will have heard me refer to it a number of times and I want to bring more attention to it. So this isn't just a program. It's a life-changing environment and community of men who are focused on personal and professional growth. We're looking at areas of relationships, wealth and health, things to help you thrive and maximize your life. Imagine having bi-monthly one-on-one coaching sessions with myself, weekly group coaching calls, and an incredible brotherhood of high achievers by your side. Now we're diving into resilience, leadership, and holistic growth to not just succeed in your career, but to thrive in your health and your relationships. Your journey to greatness, it starts here. So join the movement and you can apply for the Strong Men of Value Academy. You can head to the man that can project.com to find out more. The Man That Can Project podcast, a podcast empowering career-driven men to live more fulfilling lives. We are here to challenge your beliefs, redefine success, and talk about the important stuff in a relatable way. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a review. My name's Lockie Stewart. Let's get into it. Welcome back. If you're tuning in for the first time, thank you so much for being here. If you get value from this episode, make sure you hit the follow button, leave a review, share it on your socials, whatever floats your boat. And for those returning listeners, man, I love you guys. Thank you so much for your support, especially since 2017. That's near, We're hitting, heading into our sixth year, which is mind-blowing. Um, I've learned so much and I hope you guys as well have learned just as much, if not more, uh, which is pretty exciting. So this morning, I got to speak at an accounting firm and being at Mental Health Awareness Week, I was sitting there having my coffee this morning thinking, okay, how am I going to start the talk? I always talk about the same things and I guess those main things being fitness, mindfulness and gratitude and I wanted to share how they came into my life and why I believe they're such important areas of your life to build your mental wellness or your mental well-being. But those things as well help you thrive and get the most out of your life. And I was sitting there and I was like, "Mm, what's been going on in my life lately that could be a relatable story that maybe people can connect with. And last week someone asked me, how do you fall in love with yourself? Or how do you learn to love yourself? And I was like, wow, that is a very big question. That is a loaded question. But I put it in a context or I responded using the context of how do you fall in love with a partner, Uh, whether it's your wife, your husband, or whoever it may be. You don't just wake up one day and go, I love you. No, 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 you don't. It is an accumulation of small, consistent daily actions that help you fall in love with someone. You build trust, you share experiences, you do things for one another, you make each other feel valued and heard, you communicate effectively. And as I was sitting there this morning, I was like, "Hmm, okay, well, could I tie that into this talk? And then I thought, Hell yeah, I can. I believe mental health and mental well-being is linked to the relationship that you have with yourself. So I got the room, I got the room to think. Uh, start talking about, you know, who here has a best friend? Put your hand up if you have a best friend or if you have a close group of, of friends. Everyone put their hand up. I said, okay, well, how have you established such a great friendship? What are the things that you've done? And they shared a few things. uh, Being, you know, I tell my mates I love them. I thank people when they do things. I give uh, time. We share experiences. A a number of things popped up. And I was like, okay, cool, cool. Thank you for sharing. How many of you have thanked yourself recently was what I fired back. How many of you have had a nice experience with yourself recently? Get your mind out of the gutter, you blokes. How many of you have told yourself that you love yourself recently? Not 
Oh, sorry, that's a lie. Two people shared that they had done that. But what that showed me, again, and I was not expecting anything different, but as a society, you have a lot of work to do at improving the relationship with yourself. I always think about this. I want my friends to be fit and healthy and strong. I really do because I want them to be able to enjoy their life. I want them to be able to have the energy and vitality. I want them to live pain-free. Equally as much, I want them to be mentally fit. I want them to have a thriving relationship with themselves and a thriving relationship with those around them. I think it's so important and how we do that is through mindfulness with the relationship we have with ourselves. There are things that we need to learn and those things are different for all of us. We can all learn them, don't get me wrong. But the priority that it may have in your life, for example, with self-awareness may be different to the level of priority in pre- increasing my self-awareness has in my life as opposed to maybe uh, improving my emotional intelligence or my communication or my temper. So it's very important for that. And finally, gratitude. We are, you know, I'm going to speak to, to a lot of people in my life of so fortunate, myself included, we also live in a world that tells, we, we, uh, tells us you aren't good enough, you aren't rich enough, you aren't healthy enough, you aren't enough. Continuously, we see that. So you may feel the need to continue to earn more, have a nicer car, look better, whatever it may be, you may feel that. And don't get me wrong, I believe it's important to strive for greatness and to continue growing because if we aren't growing, we're dying. You know, we're going to regress. We're going to tolerate poor performance. We're going to allow our habits and standards to drop. So I think it's important to strive for excellence. However, if we can't be happy with what we have, that next thing will never be enough. You've probably set a goal before where you think that by achieving this goal, all of the problems you're experiencing right now are going to disappear. I know I have, and when I achieved a goal, I'm like, oh, that's not turned out the way I thought it would, or that hasn't solved the problems that I thought it would solve. Here I am, the goalposts have to shift, and it's on to the next thing. So practicing gratitude is an extremely important thing. So as I was sharing this this morning, I was like, well, fitness came into my life from a very young age. I was a young, active kid. I always wanted to be to be sorry a professional athlete but when I achieved certain levels of success with sport I only realized that it didn't improve my insecurities it didn't improve various other challenges I was having mentally and so I realized that you need to pair fitness with mindfulness or mental fitness but there are a bucket load of things that fitness taught me and continue to teach me that are non-negotiables in my life, which is why it's such a key pillar, right? It's taught me and continues to teach me to be resilient. Every day when you're in the gym or you're running or whatever your uh, exercise of choice is, you're pushing yourself, right? When you push yourself, it gets uncomfortable. When you get uncomfortable, your mind starts telling you, stop, man, stop. But every time you push through that, you're getting a little win, right? And those wins stack up. Those wins add up. The more of those little wins you get consistently, the more your confidence will build. I promise you that. And with more confidence, the likelihood that you will take more risks to create greater levels of success in your life is heightened. So those little wins you can get from fitness are so important. But it also has you having more energy, more vitality, more confidence in your appearance, which once again, are all linked to the level of confidence and success that you have outside of it. So don't neglect your fitness. The second one, mindfulness. As I mentioned, I had and I still do have a great level of fitness for what I want from my life. 
my work, my mind takes more work than my body at this point because my training age, ment- uh, physically, is a lot older than my training age mentally, which you know I've only really been working on my tr- mental training for about eight years. Right? I realized that I lacked direction or purpose. My confidence came in ebbs and flows, and my communication with myself and the world around me was terrible. I was so fortunate the day that Amy kicked me out of the cab. I was so fortunate the day that I had my rock bottom moment that left me with a fork in the road. One, you know, if I went left, I could have sat in self-pity and continued to blame everyone around me as to why my life sucked and why I didn't like myself. Or I could choose the right side of the fork, which is what I did take where I decided, look, All these things continue to keep happening to me. You are the common denominator. What are you going to do about it? And that's when I decided to go, look, look, I've performed at a high level, but I keep sabotaging so many things. I need to work on what's going on in my head. I needed to get clear on who I was as a man. I needed to get clear on what I wanted from my life, what I valued. I needed to get clear on who I needed in my circle. And then I needed to action that. I started reading books. I started listening to podcasts much like you're doing right now. I made decisions around where I wanted to go, what I needed to learn, and my life changed. You know, pairing fitness with mental fitness or mindfulness is a powerful conversation. A conversation, combination, sorry. But if you don't, put this third piece in, if you don't put and practice gratitude, you will continue to keep having to move the goalpost because everything that you work towards is never enough. I mentioned this, the life that I have right now is the life that I always wanted, the income, the lifestyle, the people in it, the health, the opportunity. But I always felt and still do, don't get me wrong, I still do, feel like I need to be doing more. I need to be working harder. I need to be earning more money. But I know that that creeps in when I'm not practicing gratitude, when I'm not appreciating what I have right in front of me right now. And if I'm not thinking about mortality, right? When I think about that, it puts everything into perspective. I am so proud of who I am. And I hope you were proud or working towards being in a position where you are proud of who you are. I hope you have incredible energy and vitality and fitness and body confidence. And I hope you can learn to be grateful for all the amazing things, people, experiences that you've had and will continue to have in your life because they are going to be what helps you live a successful life. They are going to be the things that help you, great habits that help you improve your mental health, improve your mental well-being. I'm not perfect at this. I don't sit here preaching, pretending to be. I'm figuring this out daily. I have setbacks much like you do, and I'm not perfect. But it's only recently I've gotten to a point where I believe I'm truly in control of my mental well-being. I truly do. I do believe there will be a lot more setbacks. But I believe if I I continue to maintain this consistent routine of training, my mind, my body... And if I continue to practice gratitude, I will be better equipped for the future and I'm going to continue thriving. I want to leave you with this. Do something today to be better for tomorrow. Thank you for listening. If you got value from this one, share it with a mate who needs to hear it. Please leave a review. And if you're curious about getting involved in our academy, make sure you head to the manthatcanproject.com forward slash strong men of value. Thank you for listening to the Man That Can Project podcast. My name is Lockie Stewart and I hope you enjoyed this episode and found it helpful. If you did, please take a moment to rate and review the Man That Can Project on your favorite podcast platform and don't forget to subscribe to stay up to date with our newest episodes. We'll see you again next time.